Hi, I'm Dustin Mulock. We're here at one of our farms uh, for Mulock Farms Limited. Uh, today we have uh, uh, no-tilled um, green into standing rye, um, uh, what I refer to as bio strip, so we're planting between two rows of rye and vetch on top of a, a clean path that was a cover crop last fall. Uh, we've used these plants to do the tillage, we no longer have to do the strip till ourselves. Um, after that we've used a roller cripper to uh, crimp the crop and attempt to mechanically kill it so we don't have to use uh, certain things like Roundup etc to terminate, uh, saving yourself some dollars and at the same time hopefully improving our soil health. Uh, we're going to see how the season goes, we're going to see how well it does for us, we'll keep you uh, in, informed. The rye on this side of the field was planted October 15th. Uh, I will be sooner uh, in the next trial, I'll be at least 15 days before that, I want to get tillering. In the spring, we planted into the standing rye alive on June the 1st. We then used a roller crimper, a uh, 15 foot roller crimper to lay the mat down. And after that we used a uh, one liter of Roundup and one liter of AMS to chemically terminate the, the rye, which was very successful for us. We did not use a residual herbicide. We wanted to use the allopath effect and the shade out of that thick rye mat to uh, see what we could do for efficiency uh, uh, per acre with the system. Uh, we're quite pleased with what we've seen. On my left is a field planted May the 12th, same variety, um, just planted earlier, uh, moist conditions. You can see the fields already coming into senescence. One of the major things that we've noticed this year is if you look at both sides of the field, we do have weed pressure uh, coming through on either side, but this did not receive the herbicide. This side did receive the herbicide. Uh, we have about equal pressure at the moment, um, but the main thing is, is there's not a tufted or crowned vetch. This is becoming a large problem for us. It's spreading every year. It is literally smothering out groups of beans in, in 10, 15 foot circles. It's becoming a massive problem. On my left in the no-till portion, we, we, we've, we see that. And so that's a massive yield hit right there uh, compared to what we don't have here. If we can smother these plants out uh, for even a portion of the cycle, we can cut back on their numbers, uh, at least for a, a short time and hopefully suppress them as time, time goes on. Rye uh, has the allopath effect associated with it. Uh, it, uh, it suppresses weeds um, in its growing stage and then that, that chemical can also leak out of its, out of its uh, body as it breaks down and continues to suppress some weeds. Um, so we feel because we didn't have to use the residual chemical on this side, we're ahead um, financially um, on our budgets. The next thing that we've also experienced with the rye is uh, twofold when it comes to nitrogen, nitrogen in the soils. Uh, rye is a big nitrogen user and in front of soybeans that's excellent. Um, if we can take our nitrogen levels down below 50 parts per million we can suppress weeds. Uh, they don't want to germinate when there's not enough nitrate there so we can just inhibit them from growing by not having the nitrogen in place. The next thing that's involved with that is the soybeans are now told you have to work for it. You have to nodulate. You have to put on the appropriate amount of nitrogen because it, uh, I believe a soybean plant needs somewhere around that 200 pounds in a year. And if it's not getting it from the soil, it has to produce its own. I think we're seeing that come through here. And when we look at these two, these are the planted to rye uh, in my right hand. And in my left hand, these are planted to no-till. We have a lot more hair roots, a lot uh, more proliferated roots where the no-till uh, it's not been able to proliferate as well. Uh, the nodulation is uh, not as uh, proliferated on the uh, side roots, etc., as well as compared with uh, larger nodes um, and things of that nature on the rye plants. So, the other, our, ins our bugs and our insects yeah. just trucking along there. But they're, you know, they're dealing with a moist situation, they've got uh, water. Doing a good job. So it looks like we got some really nice aggregation. Everything just crumbles. It's a sandy loam soil, so aggregation is harder here. We don't get the, the macro, but we don't have plating. That's number one. As long as we don't cause the uh, 
and cause the plating, then we're okay. Well, there's maybe a small amount of plating there. That's mm. our that's our, our 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 biggest concern here, and why we want to start using the uh, uh, the the plants. The, the ground still easily crumbles, etc. It's just because of uh, it's either a form of compaction, or I'm not sure. Or maybe there's the depth of a, of equipment in the past. I'm, I'm not sure. But the top doesn't seem to have as much problem as it does lower lower down. Well, something to work on anyway. Try to improve. This is October 25th, 2016. Uh, we're standing in a bio strip till field. Uh, basically what this is, is using roots to do the tillage rather than steel. Um, we will no-till plant uh, twin row soybeans into this next season. Uh, where I'm standing is the tillage plants and legume production. The roots of the soybeans will grow down into this and make use of the work that's already been done for them. Between the rows, is uh, high biomass grass. This grass is going to be a provided armor mat to preserve moisture. On the tillage row, we're looking at uh, sunflowers, rape, uh, kale, all very aggressive roots, do lots of tillage. Uh, then we also have legume production, uh, different types of peas, uh, some crimson clover, things of that nature. Uh, on this soybean biostriptil, the legumes are cut back. We don't want to produce too much nitrogen. The high biomass grass rows has oats, barley, and cereal rye in it. All these are designed to soak up any leftover nutrients as these winter killing crops die between the row. We don't want leaching, we don't want loss, we spend time and energy to make it. Uh, the hairy vetch in between will also produce nitrogen that the rye and the, uh, the rye will pick up and preserve for us and then release slowly to the, to the soybeans. The hairy vetch is easy to kill and that's why we've removed the uh, red clover. It can be more difficult to kill in the spring. Herbicide program on this in the spring, uh, early on, 10 days before we plant, we'll come in with uh, 0.5 a liter of 240 to get the hairy vetch. Um, other than that, uh, everything else uh, will um, already winter kill in the row. After we plant, we'll come in with a, a generic Roundup herbicide, uh, 1 liter of AMS, and uh, we will spray off the uh, cereal rye that is, that is remaining. Um, by that time, we want it to be in a fixed carbon form, so a lot taller in, 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 in lignite form, that it will fall over and provide our soil armor for us. The oats and the barley uh, have already formed their fixed carbon stage. During the winter, and after they freeze, they'll fall over on their own. Row cleaners will push them out of the bean row and back into the center uh, while they'll lay on top of the soil. At the same time, the cereal rye, when it's sprayed with the one liter Roundup, quickly breaks down and begins to lay down. We will wait a week to a week and a half when the soybeans are just coming out of the ground. So uh, beyond cot cotyledon but into first trifoliate during the heat of the day, we will roll it. This will push the uh, cereal rye down because it's began to break down and become very malleable, but it won't hurt the soybeans at the same time. The farm that we're on, a um, rental farm of ours, um, this farm has a history of being uh, very wet in the spring. It does not have tile. Um, we will make use of the cereal rye to soak up some of that extra moisture and also provide us a path for on, on our tire tires to drive uh, to hold us up and to uh, limit compaction in the spring.